Hi there, it's Ian Reynolds, Community Manager for BallerNerd.com. This is a simple XSplit tutorial and teach you how to stream HD quality gaming over a, any online streaming account. Okay, so let's start off here. Uh, first off, let's talk about system specs. If you have a three-core, or a, I guess, tri-core or double-core processor, this is going to be a little bit more taxing on your system. Um, it can be done. You would probably have to overclock or have a high clock speed. Also, it also depends on the demands of whatever game you're playing. If you're playing like a browser game, for example, it probably won't take that much processing power, so you'll probably be all right. But something such as like StarCraft II or Deus Ex Human Revolution or even Team Fortress could uh, add to the demands of your ability to stream. Um, I personally have a four-core processor and it seems to work fine. So pretty low clock speed too. Um, so let's let's get started here. Um, you also will need a an account with either UStream. I believe YouTube might have a streaming service, uh, Justin TV or Own.TV. There are other streaming services, but those, these are the like, four main ones. So down here in the bottom left, we have Add Screen Region, where you can add a media source, bring this up a little bit, add media source, so that'll be a camera, another file, could be a just a particular part of your screen, um, so you don't want to show your whole screen, you just want to show like half of it for example, uh, you can show add a camera, add a game, typically to get the game to come up you have to have the game already running and then you select the game exe and it'll you'll have a little pop up that'll come up in the top left and you just select that, add title, add another live stream so you can have a stream within your stream a little inception going on there and then let's go down here to the bottom right down here on the bottom right we have current scene which means you can select you can set like pause screens like we have here so that way I can be doing things in the background such as visiting my Facebook page and some other things so that my viewers cannot see my personal information or things that I'm setting up for the stream also then here we have game stream which is the selected region we have and you can set up additional things here. You can also set up hotkeys to adjust these things so that you don't have to alt tab out and can select them. Let's get started here with view. Under view, you have you can set your default resolution resolution that you want to broadcast in. I usually broadcast it here in this custom HD. You can edit your resolutions here, which we'll do here in a few in a minute. And then you can edit your frame rates. Uh, your, the higher the frame rate, the more demand it's going to meet on your system. The lower the frame rate, the less demand on your system, but also means the quality of the video is going to be lower. The human eye can really only see it about 30 frames per second, so probably good with about 29, 30, or 25. Transition, this will transition you between different scenes. Um, you're, then you have a transition speed. That's uh, how fast you see the transition. Also, for the transitions, there's different types. You can transition left, transition right. You can see my background just changed. The Windows 7, so let me freak you out there. And then you can scale the viewpoint, and that's this window we're looking at right now. I currently have it scaled to the actual size, but you can scale it down to 70, for example, and it'll make it smaller so it's more manageable. Let's scale that back up so it's easier to see. The actual. Okay, now here's probably one of the most difficult parts. It's setting up your channel. You can do local recording, which means you record straight to your desktop. Uh, this is not typically recommended when you're recording to... Uh, live stream because it's going to be more taxing on your system. Also, it's going to be a huge file depending on if you're streaming for like one to two hours. It's going to be pretty pretty considerable size. And then eventually, once you get a channel set up, you'll hit, see the ability to directly stream right to uh, whatever um, I guess streaming service you use. And we'll talk more about that later. So let's go and edit channels. And this is actually where you're going to set up streaming to your channel. You can see I have local recording set up, so I have settings set for local recording. We'll come back to that later in a future video. And then we have my actual channel right here. So typically, to start it, to create a new channel, I would do add. But in this case, I'm just going to do edit. So you can see my settings. You can see I, I have my, my channel username is in here. I have a password. And then a stream key would be something that your uh, stream provider will give you. For example, you go for Twitch TV, you go to... Uh, www.twitch.tv slash broadcast you log in and then you, you'll have a stream key which you can select you do not want to share that stream key with other people otherwise they can log into your account with no password 
and then you have to set your channel, set your location, it's very important to set your location, to the proper location, otherwise um, it could hurt the quality of your stream. Uh, it uploads to a local server, or at least the server that's closest by, so you want, you want a server that's close to you. Video, for video encoding, we can go ahead and just leave it as default XSplit. You always want quality to be eight or higher. Uh, seven is okay, six is a maybe, but five to zero is pretty low. For desktop streaming, you, like I'm doing right now, you could probably do four or five, but that's dependent on your bit rate and some other things. Also dependent on your frame rate as well. You want a higher frame rate if you have lower quality. Um, for bit rate and buffer rate, we want those to be actually above 500, we want those to be around 800 minimum if you're streaming a game. Otherwise, people won't watch your stream because quality is way too low. For resolution, we can go ahead and leave that as, just ignore that for now. We can, for resolution, we can leave that as default stage resolution as we're going to set a custom resolution. If you can get your bit rate, again, if you can get your bit rate over 800, it's going to be really good. Your bit rate is determined by how fast your internet service provider gives you an upload speed. You can check that at like speedtest.net, for example. Also, you can go down here to test bandwidth, and that'll tell you uh, about what you can set these numbers to um, given, given your ISP speed. So it'll test your ISP for you. I tend to find that this is actually a little fast, so I bring it down maybe like 500 points. For audio encoding, you definitely need this 44.100 kilohertz point 16-bit stereo. Uh, leave the codec the same and put the bit rate to... 6400. If anything is, if it's any lower than that, then you're just going to sound muffled. You're just going to sound like you're talking like this the whole time. It's really not going to be any good. Nobody's going to want to watch that or be able to understand what you're saying. Unless you are intending to record the broadcast down to your uh, desktop, leave automatically recording broadcast not unselected and then go ahead and check interweave audio video into RMD channel. You can also sign up for a Justin TV account here if you don't already have one. It's just a, I'm sure it's a little advertisement thing. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. Normally you want to hit OK if you're if you're saving it. You don't hit cancel. And then let's go to resolutions. So you have a bunch of resolutions that you can broadcast in, but uh, really for the simple setup, if you want to be able to broadcast in HD and you don't want to be super demanding on your system, you we're going to set what's called a custom resolution. So you're going to go down here to add. And then you're going to set your width to 1024 and set your height to 576. In the description, just do custom HD, hit OK, and this will be 16 by 9, so it'll, it'll come up in a widescreen setting. And then make sure all these other boxes are unchecked here, and then hit Apply, and then OK. Now under General Settings, Typically, you're going to want to let XSplit disable Aero Theme. I have it enabled because of me recording my desktop right now using another program. You want to enable Game Source that allows you to select the game. Typically, you're going to have to have the game running before you can select it. So you can't just add it via an .exe file. Enable Skype, Skype interaction allows uh, your if you're like on Skype, for example, it allows your friends to be heard over your stream. Microphone, you can select, or audio, you can select your microphone here. I have a USB headset. Silence detection, threshold, and silence period. Uh, silence detection is going to be able to, like, well, if you're not really making a whole lot of noise. Threshold is going to be, let's say, your breathing. If your breathing is really quiet, you can, and you don't want people to hear your breathing, raise the volume, raise, raise the number. So it'll, it'll detect things based on how quiet or how loud you are. You're going to have to figure out what works for you. And just as, this is just trial and error, silence period. That really depends on how long you're going to be silent. Uh, my recordings, that's going to be where it's going to record in your desktop if you're doing local recording. That's not it. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and then let's see what else. Hotkeys, that'll help you set hotkeys for changing the current screen settings. If you want to, let's say, hide, your, hide what you're doing from your viewers and you don't want to tab out. Uh, let's see what else here. Set your profile. Doesn't really do anything. So it's not really important. Cancel. No. Typically say yes to that. Uh, announce. If you go to here to announce, you can click, uh, let's say, announce to your Justin TV uh, profile. That'll say what you're doing. That'll come up right here in the very top. You're going to have to edit this, this thing manually. And let's see. Here, what else do we get? Yeah, there's Twitter, Twitter integration, and then Facebook. 
Facebook we don't have set up, but we'll, we'll get there. And then once you're done, hit finish announcing. Usually I just copy and paste the things between the Justin TV and the Twitter. Okay, and then general settings. That's, that'll take you back into the other window. Let's not worry about that. And then uh, this is this will give you like the ad source that's that's a little bit lower. That's under file. And that's pretty much it. If you have any further questions or want to see a little bit more advanced tutorials, please visit the Bodner.com YouTube page. And thanks for watching.